Hello, Nelson Mandela Robotics. How is everyone doing this fine day? Today we are going to be talking a little bit about the LED. This is by popular demand from a couple of our classes because sometimes we do this in Tinkercad and sometimes we do this in real life. And we're going to talk about both of those ways of hooking up a basic LED really quickly right here. At this point, if you're t listening to this, I'm hoping that you have a basic understanding of Ohm's Law because we're not going to be going into that with this one. But we will talk through Tinkercad. We will talk through what it looks like to hook one of these up on an actual real life breadboard. With that being said, let's get started. Here we have Tinkercad, and I've set this up in a really simple way. I've got a basic LED circuit. I've named my file properly, which is usually important. And I've dropped in the basic components we're going to be working with today, and that is an LED, a breadboard, a resistor, and a battery. Now to talk about these pieces, what we need to know is that the LED is going to be a single directional unipolar uh, part that is going to allow us to put voltage through it, and it's going to light up. Our resistor is going to work in either direction, bipolar, and it is going to prevent some of the flow of amperage. Not voltage, but amperage. we got a 9 volt battery here, which is a pretty beefy battery for something like this, and uh, we could use something smaller if we wanted to. LEDs don't take that much current at all. Now, I'm going to hook this up first in Tinkercad, and I'm going to explain what we're doing with the breadboard here, and then I'm going to hook this up with the actual kit. So, our battery starts out in this example by being directly wired into the power rails. These are our power rails here, they run the whole length of the breadboard. Now, if we only plan on using the one side of the breadboard, we can just stick to the ones that are here. If we plan on using both sides, I'm going to hook this up anyway, we are actually going to run them from side to side on the breadboard to make sure that we have connections all over the place. This second side, the bottom side here, isn't necessarily connected to the top side unless we make that connection. Um, basically, we are going to connect this up. Now, this whole rail along here and connected to this black wire and connected all the way along here is going to actually be connected to the negative lead of the battery. Nice and easy. Uh, positive lead, same thing. Now, the thing we have in the middle here are called terminal strips. And I'm going to give you a warning right now because something I do see students do occasionally is they'll hook up their circuit. And one of the first things they'll do is they'll be like, okay, great, I've got this here. And I'm going to put the LED here. And I'm going to put this. And I'm going to make sure everything gets connected. And they get super excited about their wires here. And they're like, great, this is awesome. But there's a slight problem. Right now, I've got a black wire here. I've got my ground wire connected directly into row 13. And I've got my red wire connected also directly into row 13. And then they go, okay, I'm going to put my LED in here. Awesome. Now, there's no electricity actually flowing through the LED. The anode end here is actually hanging out into the distance, and it's not connected to anything. There's no electricity flowing through there. The electricity is, for the most part, going to follow, or most of the electricity is going to follow the easiest possible path, which right now is straight through this black wire, then straight through this red wire, back into the battery, where those electrons are just going to keep flowing and flowing and flowing. And that isn't a good thing, because what's going to happen if you do this is you're actually going to potentially cause some damage. You're going to ca potentially cause a fire. Nine volts usually don't get that warm but they will um, they will start shorting and they will start actually getting pretty hot which we don't really want so we're gonna move the wires now this is a correct circuit but it's backwards notice that your LED has a flat side and a round side and this is the same for LEDs that are actually the ones you're gonna see they also usually have a short leg and a long leg which uh, I never use this as an example of how to actually figure it out but the long leg is the positive side it's the rounded side and the short leg is the negative side I don't like to use that one because often in labs people will cut the legs to make them even or level or even off level and they'll get it backwards it's never good that being said the problem we have with this LED, as we talked about with Ohm's Law, is that we have a lot of amperage rolling through it. If I turn this on right now, this LED, well, A, this LED is not going to work because it's backwards. So I'm going to hit the R key on my keyboard to spin it around. Now my cathode end is in the uh, negative and my anode end is in the positive. And we can turn around and we can see that it explodes when we do this. It's getting 915 milliamps, while the maximum it should have is 20 milliamps. So we're going to fix this by putting a resistor in the circuit. Now, it doesn't matter which side of the circuit we put the resistor on. It doesn't matter if it's positive or negative. This resistor will work just the same no matter what. Now, I'm going to actually hook this up with a um, I'm going to actually hook this up with a 470 ohm resistor because that's one of the very common ones we have in the lab. And all I'm going to do is I'm just going to move this wire out of the way. And I'm going to hook up my resistor like so, so that I have a full circuit. And again, I can see that. I can see the voltage going through the negative lead, through the resistor, through these terminal strips, through the LED, back out through the positive, and out through the positive lead here. This is going to give me something that I can actually work with and can actually turn this LED on without harming it. 
Now, that's our basic LED circuit. This is hello world for electronics. We use that term in computer science all the time about your first program being the one that says hello world. You've connected the computer to the real world. It says something. And in this case, we've made it say something as well. Now, let's hop over and let's do this for real. Let's do this with an actual breadboard because the uh, idea behind it is actually very simple, uh, but it is very much the same sort of thing. Now, what I'm going to try to do here is I'm going to try to make this breadboard work. I'm going to get my hands in here and I'm going to try to keep them out of the way as much as I can. So we've got our breadboard. Now, instead of having a half size breadboard, we have a full size breadboard. We've got our battery, just like we did in the Tinkercad version. We've got a couple of wires, which we're going to use to jump this thing. We also have a resistor. In this case, I've got a 270 ohm resistor, sorry, 220 ohm resistor, which is fairly common in some Arduino kits. Um, don't worry, it will still work. It will actually Actually get the uh, amperage down where it needs to be and we also have our LED and I've picked a nice blue one because it's gonna be nice and bright now there's two parts you haven't seen before the first is the 9 volt to barrel plug now this you may have seen on some toys here and there often you'll see them in kids toys when we're hooking up a 9 volt battery uh, and this end is a barrel plug and it fits nicely into our last part which is our actual breadboard power source now this is a special circuit board here. You'll notice that it actually has pins on the back. These pins are meant to go into the breadboard. And on the front we got a power switch and we also have a couple of these little jumpers. And I've actually jumped this off to 3.3 volts here. Uh, you can see that you've got this little jumper pin here. And by removing that jumper pin you can see on the board here that you've got 5 volts and 3.3 volts written on here. So you can choose which side you want to use, 5 volts or 3.3. I recommend 5 volts. It's what I've done. Uh, actually 3.3 wouldn't be bad for this one based on the uh, based on the resistor I have in there. All right, what we're going to do is we're going to spike this onto the breadboard and I'm going to warn you right now, some not all breadboards are made equally. Some breadboards you will find actually um, don't connect all the way along the power rails and uh, the only way to really check that is with a multimeter. I'm going to do that another day. I'm not going to worry about that right now. Um, but I'm going to connect my battery here. And one of the things I can check is I can actually push the power power button and I can see the LED turns on. I also have the ability to plug this in with USB if I want to. Uh, there's not a bad not a bad way to power this sometimes, but we have a power but we have battery here. Life is good. Let's make it happen. Now, just like we did in the Tinkercad thing, we're going to run this from our power rails on the outside here into a resistor into an LED. The main difference is right now, I'm going to hook up the LED first. So I'm going to take my LED, I'm going to look along the side here so that I can see that I've got a flat side. I'm going to show you it from the top as best I can here to see that there is a flat side beveled off right there. It's also my short leg. And I am very simply going to just run that into my breadboard. Okay, I'm going to make sure that these legs get nice and deep into here. If you have the ability to, it's not always a bad idea to use some pliers to just make sure that those find their way all the way in. Nothing wrong with that. Okay, they do work with finger pressure though. I'm going to use my resistor. I realize my resistor is pretty small here. It's quite tiny. I'm going to make sure it's in the same row as my uh, LED. And I'm going to put it in another row, which other row it goes into. Again, not all that important. I'm just going to give it a little press with some pliers. Again, this being an optional step, if you happen to have some, they are quite helpful. Now, I'm going to look where my flat side was. And I'm going to connect my green wire to the flat side by connecting it into the same row of the terminal strip. I'm going to connect that into the blue side of my um, the blue side of my um, power rail here, which is going to attach to my power source. I'm then going to take my red wire and do the exact same thing onto the resistor there and there. And now what I should have when all is said and done, I'm just going to jump this over a little ways onto that side, move it over so we can see it. Now what I should have is a full circuit. If I take this, I can actually see that I'm going to have power flow from the ground or negative through my green wire, it goes into my LED here, it goes back through my LED, through my resistor, and back out my red wire into the positive voltage. When I turn this on, I get an LED that lights up. That's Hello World. That's the basics of how you make an LED turn on with your Arduino breadboard. And it's uh, your first introduction to electronics. So I hope you enjoy that. I hope you get through it. Good luck and have fun.